All right, folks, it's Bass Action, back in action here. In this video, we are going to cover a few more theorems from our chapter two, and then we will summarize these in class. So we just wanna go through um, these couple theorems. Also, in these two pages, we are going to look at a couple different varieties of proofs beyond the two-column proof that we've been doing in class. So up here at the top, I first want to take a look at some situations where we can use some of our algebraic properties leaving our um, expressions or our equations in a congruence format instead of switching to equality. So let's take a look here. The symmetric property of congruence says that instead of having to say, let's, um, instead of having to say it as, let's say, x equals 5, then 5 equals x, we can actually leave our equations congruent statements in their congruence format. So, for example, if I have AB, segment AB is congruent to e, EF, I can rewrite that and also say segment EF with the bar is congruent to segment AB. So the symmetric property can apply to congruence as well. We can do it with angles as well. If angle M is congruent to angle E, I can also say that angle E is congruent to angle M, and we don't have to switch to equality when we're working with the symmetric property. We can also stay with congruence if we want to work with transitive. Now I do want to make a note, not substitution. So most of the time, most of the time we say that transitive and substitution can be used interchangeably. Substitution specifically requires that you be in equality. So you can write yourself that note. This does require an equal sign. So if you want to do substitution, you have to switch to equality. However, we can use transitive left in its congruence form. So this is a good place to really start to understand our transitive because it saves us some time. So if TO, it's segment TO is congruent to segment UP and segment ES is congruent to UP, what we want to notice is that we have a segment UP on each of our two little congruent statements. In that case, the best way to recognize how to use transitive is to essentially mark out the UPs. So if I get rid of the thing they have in common, then what is left over is what will be congruent. So segment TO is congruent to segment ES. We can do the same thing with our angles Angle M is congruent to angle E, and angle M is congruent to angle O. What do these two equations or congruent statements have in common? They both have an angle M, so I can mark out the angle M's, and I'll end up with angle E is congruent to angle O. Now, we will talk a little bit more about how we recognize that um, when we are in class. The next thing we want to do is we want to look at this congruent supplements theorem. Now, this was actually one that appeared on one of your tests, so let's take a look at how this theorem works. The congruent supplement theorem says, if two angles are supplementary to the same angle, remember this is going to be our hypothesis, so this is what we would need to know is true, then our conclusion is that the angles are congruent to each other. So. We're gonna do this in two steps. First, we're gonna just translate this to a simple statement here. So angle T and angle E are supplementary. Angle T and angle O are supplementary. That should match this initial statement here, our hypothesis. So let's take a look at this and break this down. Do we in fact have two angles supplementary to the same angle? We do. We have angle E is supplementary to angle T and we have angle O is supplementary to angle T. So since those two angles are sub both supplementary to the same angle, the two angles must be congruent to each other. And those two angles are angle E and angle O. So angle E is congruent to angle O. 
Now, let's work through this little proof so that we can understand why this is actually working. So we're gonna start with that hypothesis, two angles supplementary to the same angle. Now, our definition of supplementary just tells us that we can break this down into our two little equations. So we're gonna write this in our equation format. So we can now say the measure of angle T plus the measure of angle E equals 180. We can say the measure of angle T plus the measure of angle O equals 180. Now, when we look at these two equations, we notice that I have T, angle T plus angle E is 180, and angle T plus angle O is 180. Since both of these equations equal 180, we can mark out the 180s, and what's left over is equal to each other, and that's what we have right here. This is a great application of the transitive property. Now, if you wrote substitution, that would be okay, but this is a great application of transitive because the entire side of one equation is equal to the entire side of another equation. The next thing we can do is look at our resulting equation and notice that we have an angle T on each side of the equation and we can subtract that measure of angle T from each side. And that, of course, is our addition subtraction property. So add, subtract. Then we're now left with the measure of angle E equals the measure of angle O. And of course, that means that they are congruent and that is going to be our definition of congruence. So that is the congruent supplements property. And from now on, you can simply, whenever you see this as your hypothesis, you get to jump straight to here without going through this full explanation in the middle. Next thing we're gonna do is look at congruent complements. It's gonna work the exact same way, except the angles will be complementary to the same angle. So if two angles are complementary to the same angle, then those two angles are congruent to each other. So again, let's look at an example. Angle O and angle S are complementary. Angle S and angle R are complementary. Find what they have in common. That's the angle S. These are the angles they have in common. And what they is left over are the two that are, are going to be congruent. So angle O is congruent to angle R. Now, flip to the next page. We're gonna go through a little bit more. The next one we're gonna look at is the all right angles are congruent theorem. Now logically we know that this should make sense. I'm gonna do this one with a paragraph proof so that we can just see that in action. All right, we've got angle A and angle B are both right angles and we want to prove that they're congruent to each other. Now we all feel pretty comfortable with this but we wanna see how this would work in a paragraph proof. First thing, a paragraph proof is written in full sentences, all right? So I'm setting this up so that we only have to fill in our blanks, but typically you would write out these full complete sentences. So what we would do is we'd say, it is given that, just as we normally start with the given, it is given that angle A and angle B are both right angles. So that matches our given. Now. Since, our, since both of them are right angles, their measures are each 90 degrees, and we do still have to explain the why, and that's by the definition of a right angle. Then, that means that the measure of angle A equals the measure of angle B by our substitution property. So, these are both right angles, they each equal 90, so if they each equal 90, then they can equal each other by our substitution property. Now, since we now know that their measures are equal, then we can say that angle A is congruent to angle B, that from here to here is our definition of congruence, and that's exactly what we wanted to prove, and in the world of mathematics, you end a proof by saying QED. Now, you don't need to do that certainly in class, but I just threw that in so that you could see that that's kind of a little flourish that mathematicians put at the ends of their proofs. 
The next thing that we want to do is we want to look at our vertical angles theorem. We've been working with this for a while, indicating that we know that if two angles are vertical angles, then they should be congruent to each other. So we want to go through that proof. So the first thing we're going to do is this one's going to be in a flow chart form. So you can kind of see how these work. Now, a flow chart says that I'm going to fill in, in each of our little box, we're going to have an idea, and it will lead to another idea and lead to another idea. And we'll be able to connect all of our little boxes of our flow chart. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to look at our picture, and we're going to identify that 1 and 2 are a linear pair. And we know that that has to be by the definition of a linear pair, because that allows us to identify it. If 1 and 2 are a linear pair, then 1 and 2 are supplementary. That is based on our linear pair theorem. If 1 and 2 are supplementary, then the measure of angle 1 and the measure of angle 2 is 180. That is our definition of supplementary angles. Now, you can see we've reached the end of this, and we can't talk about this next box until this whole side is filled out. So we're going to come back up here and we'll complete the other side. This one says I want to use the definition of linear pair again. Well, if I use the definition of linear pair here for angle 1 and angle 2, I need a different pair of linear I didn't I need a different linear pair. And in that case, it'll be angle 2 and angle 3. So we're going to identify those as a linear pair and now we'll repeat the process. If they're a linear pair, then the linear pair theorem says that they must be supplementary. If they're supplementary, then they must add to 180. So we're going to write our equation, and we're going to remember to use our m's. Now that we have both of these sides complete, we can go ahead and we can connect them. Now remember, when you have, I'm going to slide this up, when you have two equations that are coming together to create one, we're going to think of that as, that's going to generally be substitution. Now I'm going to give you a little bit more information on this one, a little spoiler, okay? This should be substitution. If I look at my two equations that I have here, Sure enough, I notice that the right-hand side of my first equation is 180, and the right-hand side of my other equation is 180. So if I can eliminate this entire side and this entire side, then the best answer for this reason is actually transitive. Now, I would accept substitution in this case because we have switched to equality, so I will take substitution, but transitive is our best answer. So now we've got the measure of angle 2 and 1 is equal to the sum of 2 and 3, and now we can continue on with our proof. From here, we're going to notice that we've got this measure of angle 2 on each side, so we're going to subtract our measure of angle 2 from each side. That's going to leave us with measure of angle 1 equals measure of angle 3. That was our addition-subtraction property. And, of course, if their measures are equal, they are congruent by the definition of congruence. So, in this proof, what we noticed is that we started off, shown, we started off with some linear pairs. And that allowed us to get to the fact that angle 1 and angle 3, that are vertical angles, are in fact congruent to each other as we wanted.